Nobody wants to spend hours or even 30 minutes making dinner at night. So today I'll be sharing five new dinners with you that you can make in only about 10 minutes or less. These dinners have simple steps, simple ingredients, but they taste bold. They really are so good. Let's go get started now. To start us off today, we are making this creamy tomato chicken. So to begin, I have two chicken breasts right here. I just cubed them into kind of like bite-sized pieces. Now I'm going to cut up my vegetables. I'm cutting up one head of broccoli, a cup of cherry tomatoes, and a cup of fresh spinach. You could always use different vegetables if you don't care for these ones though. But to this pan on my stove, I added in a tablespoon of olive oil. Once my oil was hot, I added in my chicken and my broccoli just to let the chicken and broccoli cook together for about five to six minutes or until the chicken is cooked through. Then add in your cherry tomatoes along with a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Let everything cook together for a couple more minutes. Now go ahead and add in your spinach. Then you're going to add in five ounces of softened cream cheese, then a half a cup of mozzarella cheese. Just to let the cheeses melt down, then you could serve this beautiful dinner up. Like I said before, you could always use different vegetables that you love. If you're not a dairy fan, you don't have to add in the cream cheese or mozzarella cheese, but we served ours over a bed of egg noodles, but this is also so wonderful over a bed of rice. This is like so flavorsome. It is rich and so, so good. This is my first time ever making a peanut butter curry on my channel and I am so excited. To this big pot on my stove, I added in two tablespoons of olive oil along with a diced yellow onion. Just let the onion soften for about three minutes. After that time, add in a tablespoon of minced garlic along with a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, and then an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is a little bit spicy, but it does add great flavor to this recipe. Then add in one teaspoon of paprika and then a half a teaspoon of coriander. Give this a really good stir. Now you're going to add in the remaining ingredients. So go ahead and add in a 14 ounce can of coconut milk. You could use any type of coconut milk that you would like. Then two 15 ounce cans of drained chickpeas. Then four tablespoons of creamy peanut butter. You want to make sure it is the creamy peanut butter just so the sauce is silky in the end. Then add in two tablespoons of tomato paste followed by a fourth cup cup of chopped cilantro, then one tablespoon of lime juice. Give this a stir and let this simmer on your stove for about five to seven minutes, stirring it occasionally. My house was smelling so good at this point, but once the simmering time is up, you could serve this up. We also served ours with non bread on the side. This is just simple non bread I got from the grocery store. I heat it up in the oven for a couple of minutes and it's really good. We serve this over a bed of white rice. The sauce is so delicious. I could basically just eat that peanut butter curry sauce. It is amazing. You could also make this with chicken instead of chickpeas if you like, but those chickpeas are so high in protein. This is a delicious, affordable, scrumptious meal. Now we are getting started on these mini taco cups. So over to this pan on my stove, I added in a half a pound of ground beef. Just break that ground beef up and cook it through. Once the ground beef is cooked through, add in a 15 ounce can of drained and rinsed pinto beans or any beans that you like. Then a fourth a cup of salsa, a fourth a cup of water, then one tablespoon of taco seasoning. Give this a really good stir to kind of like combine the ingredients. Now it's time to assemble the taco cups. So over to my cutting board, I have large burrito sized tortillas right here. You're going to want to cut circles in them. So you could use like a cookie cutter or any type of like large cutter you have. Or if you're like me and don't have a large cookie cutter, you could use kitchen scissors just like this. You'll need about 12 round tortilla circles. And then if you're wondering what to do with like the excess tortilla, you can make them into like tortilla strips. They're super good. You could like add them to burrito bowls for that, you know, excess tortilla, but just spray your muffin pan with nonstick spray, then add the tortilla circles right into the muffin pan just like this. Fill the tortillas with a ground beef mixture now, and then you will top with a little bit of cheese. Bake this in a preheated oven to 425 degrees for about four to five minutes, or until the cheese is melty and the tortillas are like golden brown.
You could fill your taco cups with anything that you'd like. We topped ours with a little bit of shredded lettuce, more salsa, cilantro, and sour cream, but guacamole would be amazing in this. You could use hot sauce. Seriously, these are so good. They're so much fun to make and such a perfect twist on regular boring taco night. Now we are making this juicy pan seared chicken and I did make mashed potatoes on the side and I do want to share the recipe with you. So to start out, peel and cube your golden potatoes into smaller pieces. Now over to a large pot of boiling water. Just add the potatoes right in there and boil them until they are fork tender. Of course, they'll cook quicker if you make the potatoes smaller. But now we're going to get started on the chicken. I have my two chicken breasts right here. Slice the chicken in half horizontally. This is going to make the chicken chicken thinner just so it cooks quicker and then it is more tender. Now I'm getting started on the seasoning mixture for the chicken. It's a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper, then one teaspoon of paprika, onion powder, and garlic powder. Give it a really good stir. Now you're going to rub the seasoning mixture onto the chicken. Make sure you rub it on the front and the back of the chicken. Now that the chicken is seasoned well, over to this pan on my stove, I'm adding in two tablespoons of olive oil. Once the oil is hot, add in the chicken. Cook the chicken on medium heat for about four minutes on each side until the chicken is like golden brown on the outside and like almost like crispy, but then the inside of the chicken will be super juicy and delicious. I only like to flip my chicken once while it is cooking. That way it forms a wonderful crust on the outside, but once the chicken's cooked, through just remove it to a plate and set it to the side over to my potatoes now that my potatoes are fork tender just go ahead and strain them set the potatoes to the side to the same pot the potatoes were cooked in add in between four to six tablespoons of butter a tablespoon of minced garlic then salt pepper dried rosemary and dried thyme those seasonings are just going to give it so much added flavor let the butter garlic and seasonings cook for about a minute in the pot this is going to enhance the flavor just by cooking the butter and seasonings together. This recipe is on page 42 in my cookbook. I make these mashed potatoes for like every holiday and everybody loves them. They are so flavorful and so good. This recipe is in the sides and appetizers section of my book and I do have some cookbooks available right now if you don't have one yet. But now add the cooked potatoes back into the pot, then add in one cup of milk, mash the potatoes up until they are creamy and smooth. If you are tired of boring chicken that is dry and not flavorful, you absolutely need to try this pan seared chicken. It is juicy and oh so flavorful. Those mashed potatoes are like herby and phenomenal. I serve this with a side salad with iceberg lettuce and spinach for the base of the salad. Now we are making these crunch wraps. So to get them started to this pan on my stove, I'm adding in a pound of ground beef. Break that ground beef up and cook it through. Once it's cooked through, if there's any excess grease in your pan, just remove the excess grease. Then you're going to want to add in a tablespoon of taco seasoning. I do have a homemade version of taco seasoning in the back of my cookbook. Then add in a fourth a cup of water and give this a really good stir. Now it's time to make the crunch wraps. This recipe is so simple. So on Onto a large burrito sized tortilla, add some refried beans in the center, then add that ground beef over the top, then place a tostada over the ground beef, then place sour cream on the tostada, followed by some shredded lettuce, tomatoes, and cheese. Place a small tortilla on top of the cheese, then fold in the edges. You want to make sure you don't overfill your crunch wrap, otherwise it's going to be hard to fold like this. Now onto a pan, spray it with a little bit of oil, add your crunch wrap, seam 
steam side down just so the seam doesn't open and everything falls out, but cook it for about a minute on each side and that will close up your crunch wrap. These crunch wraps are absolutely delicious. If you have never made a crunch wrap like this before, you need to try it. I have been making these for years. Whenever my sister comes to my house for dinner, she always requests these. They are seriously that good and so easy to make. Make sure you're subscribed down below the video so you don't miss the next video like this. Bye for now.